Hello, brothers and sisters. It's your weekly pastor's message. Here we are in June, and we're already into it. This Sunday, we have the Feast of Corpus Christi, the Solemnity of Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi in Latin, of course, means the body of Christ. This is where we, we celebrate and rejoice in the gift of the Holy Eucharist. Jesus Christ making himself truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. I mean, it just should blow our minds just how close he wants to be with us, how he wants to walk with us in our life, to deepen our conversion and our healing. And, you know, really, this is what we're about as a parish. As a Eucharistic parish, Jesus Christ, truly present in the Eucharist, is the center. He's the one to whom we're all looking. And, and one of the things that maybe you, you've heard me, heard me preach about, if you want to talk about themes over this last three years, is the fact of, of Jesus being the Lord, the Lord of our life and how much He loves us, of that unconditional love that He showed us on the cross, giving us the gift of the Eucharist, and really our need to respond to that. Right? Love always asks for a response. And, and sometimes you may hear me in, in my homilies just like, it may, it may feel like, gosh, he's really trying to get us to move. And they're like, yeah, absolutely, because we are in the midst of love and, and his love empowers us to love him in return and to make the changes in our life that we know need to be made and, and that we can't make on our own. You know, that we can only make with the power of his grace. And that's another theme too, is this, the power of God's grace in us. And the Eucharist is, is, shows us that. Of, of how, you know, this is the divine power being given to us to be consumed and to, and to not so much make, you know, the Eucharist us, is that through the Eucharist, Jesus makes us into His body. And, and his, his body that was crucified on the cross, His body that, was risen, that is risen from the dead and that is glorified in heaven. And so uh, this is a weekend to, to rejoice in that great gift, to commit ourselves and to be open to change, right? To be open to the growth that the Lord wa- desires for us, right? We, don't, we, want, we want to develop and to, and to become um, fervent disciples of Jesus because that's the only way we're ever gonna, really going to be happy too. So we have our, our masses this weekend and you're going to hear a sequence. You know, sequences, as you heard from me before, is those poetic texts that happen on big occasions after the second reading, but before the Alleluia. And this uh, Sunday, we we have one of those sequences that we'll hear uh, chanted. Um, And and so to to give ourselves over to the worship of God and the the sacred liturgy. And then after the 1030, we'll have our procession. And we'll follow the same procession route that we did the first time we did a Eucharistic procession two years ago. You may remember that time before covid can be hard to remember sometimes, but in any case, we're going to leave the, the church and we're going to go to the school because as we know, the school is that number one work that we do here after the liturgy in this parish is, is the, and that's our number one work of evangelization. So there'll be an altar of repose set in the courtyard of the school. We'll go into there and we'll pray and sing as we go along and we'll hear litanies and readings and, and things like that. And then we'll have a benediction at that altar, and then we'll process over to the parish center, I'm sorry, to the parish office, where there'll be another uh, altar set up. We'll do the same thing. We'll have benediction there. And then we'll circle around and come back and conclude at the Christ the King patio, right, with, before the great Christ the King statue that we have. And then we'll have our final altar there. It'll be a, a wonderful experience, very prayerful, very moving sort of experience to do a procession. It gives us time to, it reminds us of our walk in life and how the Lord is walking with us and that also how we take Jesus out of the church into the world, uh, which is our mission, right? To go and make disciples of all nations. Uh, so I invite you to come. If you, if you didn't make it last time we did it, uh, please come. And th- those who did it last time, you'll remember what a, what a great experience it was. Um, it'll probably last about 45 minutes. And so if you go to another Mass but want to be in the procession, just show up around, you know, the end of the 1030 Mass. We'll probably be about 1125 or so and jump into the procession. We'll have some of our first communicants. We'll have altar servers. We'll have incense. We'll have the Knights of Columbus. We'll have the St. Vincent de Paul. 
and it'll just be a great, a great sign of who we are as Christ the King Parish. And then when we're all done at, at the Christ the King altar, we will have coffee and donuts, right? But, but only for those who go to the procession. I'm just kidding. Anyone who comes can have coffee and donuts. But uh, it'll be a nice time to be together and just begin as we move out of COVID into a more normal parish life. I mean, there's nothing more normal about parish life than coffee and donuts. So we'll see you then. So you've heard me talk about CYO here at CTK, Catholic Youth Organization, which is a sports program that has a long and venerable tradition in this parish. And primarily it's, it's, it's run out of our school, but it's important to remember is that CYO is for everyone. Anyone in the Catholic Church can be, can be a part of that. And, and it's really seen also as a parish thing too. So I was thinking and talking with, with um, Sarah Tabor, our principal, and, uh, and our, with the pastoral council too about uh, working on this parish school integration. I think this is a great way to, to do, help accomplish that integration is our CYO sports program. So we went, went through uh, COVID, we had, a, we had to reboot, and so we're looking to relaunch this in the fall. Here's the thing. CYO depends upon parents, parents who are willing to give up their time. And there's a variety of ways to help. Um, you know, there's a parent that, that kind of serves as the athletic director, if you will, so kind of the overall directing of, of, the, of the sports and the, and the practices and games and stuff like that. Um, there's assistance to that. There's there's coaches, you know, willing to, to help coach a team, um, even somebody to just come show up to the games and keep score, you know, all sorts of ways of, of being involved. And so um, uh, to be able to offer these programs, we need to have that, that parent volunteer buy-in. And you don't even have to be a parent either. You could be someone who maybe perhaps is retired, has some extra time, someone who just wants to be involved with, with the development of our children. Um, that to, to, to come on and get, and get involved in this. And this is something that the whole parish can do. Even if you, know, you have children in public school or, you, or your relatives are in public school, they can also be a part of, of, of CYO. So uh, this fall, we would like to have cross country and volleyball. The winter, we'd like to offer basketball. And in the spring, to offer track and field. So we'll need coaches for grades three through eight for, for those sports. Um, somebody who would be willing to serve as, as the athletic director. And there's, a, there's also a little board of directors that helps to organize that. So, so these are the areas that we're rebuilding, and we just ask you to step forward and get involved. Um, Bill Hill, who's one of our outstanding uh, school dads, uh, is helping us kind of in, in this reboot. Uh, so you can contact him, you can contact the parish office or the, or the school office as well, and we will uh, help get you dialed in to, to helping us in this, in this program. You know, really, sports is a really integral part of our development as human beings, and, and it's always been a part of, of Catholic life. So love to, to get that going again. I'd like to let everyone know that we have a blood drive here at Christ the King on Monday, June 7th at 2 p.m. It's a great work that we do to help our local community, and so I just encourage everybody to donate their blood. And finally, I want everyone to know that we have found our director of sacred music. Uh, we, uh, we went through our second round of search and, and uh, found this individual. He rose right to the top of our candidates, um, and it was unanimous among the search committee that we offer him the position. So I have offered him the position, and he has accepted it. But here's the thing, we still need your prayers because he is actually Canadian. And so now we have to obtain a, a work visa for him to have him come and take this position. So that's underway now. I'm, I'm very grateful to the Archbishop that he has uh, generously offered the sponsorship of the Archdiocese for this petition. Um, and so please keep that in your prayers. As soon as er, that, as soon as, you know, if and when that comes through, we're very hopeful it will, then I can be happy to introduce him to you all. Um, but I'm very excited about that and where he will be able to take our program. So keep that in your prayers. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. God bless you and we'll see you at church.